a Stuart 7A model steam plant, part 18, making a special stud to mount the locking bar. As I mentioned in the last episode, rather than drilling yet another hole in the steam chest cover, I'm going to use an existing hole in the steam chest cover to mount the locking bar. And for the moment, I'm moving the locking mechanism complete with the reversing lever out of the way. And this is one of the other reasons why I have not yet locked the drop arm in place onto the reversing lever shaft. And here I'm unscrewing the locking bar from the anchor fitting that I made earlier. I wasn't happy with the appearance of a 5BA nut on the end of the locking bar, so I clamped it firmly in my three-jaw chuck. Then I machined away the hexagon part of the nut. With certain tools, especially these tip tools, when they get a little bit blunt, it's often a good idea to cut from left to right instead of right to left. As you can see from this demonstration, I'm getting a much better finish when I cut from left to right, because the right-hand side of the tip of the tool hasn't done much work and therefore it's a lot sharper. And here is the finished job. I think this looks a lot better than a commoner garden nut on the end of the bar. On to the next part of the job. I need to remove this stud and make a very special stud to fit in its place. First of all, I loosened it with a pair of pliers. And normally I wouldn't do this, but as the stud was loose anyway, it came out very easily. For tightening and removing studs, I recommend a pair of lock nuts. To make the new stud, I'm going to use this. It's a piece of stainless steel hexagon bar. I drew a line on it using a felt tip marker. This is only an approximate mark, but it shows me how far I have to turn the part. Into the three-jaw chuck in the old boxford, and a quick face across the end of it. And as this hexagon bar is made from stainless steel, I keep the tool moving at all times. And I also do this when drilling the end of it. A piece of stainless steel will work harden very quickly, and once that happens, you can't work it anymore. A carbide tip tool will probably get through it, but high-speed steel tools will not, they will blunt very quickly. I've pulled the piece of hexagon out of the chuck, just for the video, it's easier to film it when it's away from the chuck. And now, with the live centre fitted in the tailstock, it's time to machine most of this stainless steel hexagon down to 3 seconds of an inch. And once I've threaded the end of its 7BA, this will form the special stud that not only holds the steam chest cover in place, the shape of the end of the stud will support the locking bar. I can't just make a long stud, put the locking bar on and tighten the nut on the stud because then the locking bar would be permanently clamped in a fixed position to the steam chest cover. If you watch the video through to the end it will be very apparent what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I intend to shorten this sequence, this is an early cut to reduce the diameter of the piece of hexagon bar. There is a big problem when you turn very small pieces of metal in a lathe, particularly long small pieces of metal. It's not too bad at the moment and the tool is cutting OK, but as I remove a lot more of the material, then it will start to bend away from the tool when it's being cut. And from a mechanical engineering point of view, that is not good. The piece of bar will probably be the correct diameter near the live centre, then it will get thicker in the middle as it moves away from the cutting tool, and finally, as the cutting tool approaches the chuck, the dimensions will become correct again. It's important to take micrometer readings very close to the chuck. Currently, because the piece of steel is still quite thick, I can take fairly deep cuts, really. But in a short while, the cuts will be very fine indeed. Attachments for lathes come in the form of fixed and travelling steadies. But when I bought this lathe, I didn't get any of those, so I don't have any means of supporting the work from behind in the centre. I could make some sort of improvised jig, but in the time it would take to make and fit the jig, the job will be completed. I've just noticed in the video that the cutting tool is not quite at the right angle. That's because I moved it in the last video and didn't reset it fully. I'm only saying that so that people don't write in saying, are you aware that your cutting tool is not at the right angle? Well, it will be soon. If you keep watching the video, I spotted it and changed it. I get a lot of comments from viewers on my videos. You wouldn't believe some of the comments that I receive. Some are offensive, some are stupid, some are really stupid, and some are, well, I don't know. I just don't understand it. And the curious thing is, the comments that I get from Patreon supporters are normal comments. But the minute that I put the video public, 
I get lots of comments and most of them are incredibly stupid. Today is the 4th of April 2020. As we're all aware, it's not a good time for the planet. And it looks like my plans to visit various model railway societies, steam locomotives, etc. will have to be put on hold. I'm also putting less videos live on YouTube. This will not affect Patreon in any way. For my Patreon supporters, I try and make a video almost every day. And will continue to do so unless, of course, I fall ill. But I'm taking every precaution against that, I just don't go out. Well, I go to the shed, which is at the bottom of the garden, but unless I'm attacked by flying viruses on the way there, I don't think there's going to be a problem. And I've washed my hands so much, my hands are now sore. Seriously though, this is serious, so I'm taking it seriously. As you can see on screen at the moment, this part is getting quite thin. And according to the micrometer, it's not thin enough yet. Maybe another cut should do it. I'll try this one. Over the years, I've developed a bit of a routine. First of all, I get out of bed. I do the usual stuff, then I make a cup of tea and sit in front of the computer. First of all, I check the comments on YouTube. I then block all the village idiot comments, and then I look on Patreon. I will then try and answer any questions that come in, but please don't swamp me with them. I'm already spending over an hour a day just wading through all the comments. And every morning I edit and voice over a new video. And sometimes it takes a while to do that. For instance, the voiceover is not a continuous thing. I really am not good at speaking to camera in a continuous line because I have a bit of a speech impediment. Even though I is well old in it, my brain still goes at quite a pace. And this is a good thing because it allows me to do a lot of things that people half my age would struggle with. I don't just mean model engineering, I mean everything in my life. But unfortunately, the side effect of having a hyperactive brain means that my mouth doesn't work fast enough, so often I stutter a bit. And if I spoke as fast as I normally do, you wouldn't be able to hear what I'm saying because you wouldn't understand it because it would be far too fast to understand, if you see what I mean. Also, I try and get rid of some of my northern accent. Unless, of course, I'm saying things like, hey, oh, there's trouble at mill, or I'm off to fetch water for steam engine. So that's why I always appear quite relaxed. I'm in front of a very expensive microphone that picks up every detail. And remember, I don't use a script. This is all completely out of my head in real time. And believe me, it's not that easy. If you don't believe me, try it. And while I'm rambling on about how I make the videos, as you can see, the piece of metal is getting thinner and thinner. I think a final pullback with the cutting tool from left to right should be okay. Although this piece of bar is now very much fatter in the center than it is at each end. If you look carefully at the image on screen, you can probably see this. I think it's time to speed up the video. To make this part the same diameter all the way along, I finished it off by filing it. A quick health and safety warning about filing in the lathe make sure that you file as a handle and be very careful. Just because I'm showing it, that doesn't mean that you have to do it. The next job is to thread the end of the stud 7BA. Here's a shot of the stud screwed in position. And now I need to machine this end of it. A word of caution. If you find yourself making small parts like this, take very fine cuts at this stage. The component is tightly held in the chuck but if you overdo the machining of the end part, you could shear it off. To finish this off, I've changed the tool for a parting tool. And by using a parting tool, the end of the hexagon part will be perfectly square to the shaft. Once I checked that the connector that I made fitted onto this shaft, it was time to turn down the end of it and thread that 7BA. This took no time at all because it's only a very short thread. And that is it. The special stud is manufactured all from one piece of metal. And in the next episode, I will be completing the job, setting the valve timing accurately, and giving the engine a test run using compressed air. To conclude, I'd just like to say, stay safe, stay well, and as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.